The statin drugs are the best-selling drugs in the world, and they do save lives if you've had a heart attack or a stroke. Chances are they're of benefit to you. However, there are those people who would like to put statins in the water, and there has been discussion of something called the poly pill in the past, where in combination with aspirin, beta blockers, uh, and Lipitor, or drugs like it, have been proposed for everybody, because they think that the number of people that would be saved would be in excess of those that have complications from the drugs. Well, of course, the poly pill never came into being, and of course, it's not in the water because it's a myth. The best thing we can do if we're going to try and prevent heart attacks, even if we've had one, is have it and, and live a healthy lifestyle. What we eat, regular exercise, stress reduction, plenty of sleep, weighing what we should, avoiding toxic exposures, and have a meaningful purpose in our life. Those drugs that are called statins are coenzyme A reductors, reductase inhibitors. And what they do is they block the production of cholesterol, but they also block the production of coenzyme Q10. So it is possible that in the absence of sufficient coenzyme Q10, that our mitochondria can't produce sufficient energy to keep our heart muscle working properly. And there have been reported cases of cardiomyopathy or congestive heart failure from coenzyme Q10 deficiencies. There are more than 21 million people that are using these drugs worldwide. And there are lots of complications that we see from them. Things such as liver problems. What happens is the liver itself uh, can fail, but we also have a problem with muscles. Muscles become inflamed, and there was a study published in the New England Journal of Medicine a few years ago that biopsied four people who had no signs of any kind of inflammation in their muscles in a clinical basis and had normal enzymes when they measured them in their blood. And yet when they stained these muscle biopsies for inflammation, they found that there was inflammation in all the people who were in the study. So we know there's a certain amount of inflammation that occurs in our muscles, which of course is one of the things that we're trying to prevent, especially in the heart muscle. Now if muscles become inflamed enough, they liberate an enzyme uh, that's called myoglobin that tends to cause a lot of problems in the body, not just muscle pain, but it puts a pigment in the bloodstream that when it gets to the kidneys can plug it up and cause liver, excuse me, cause uh, kidney failure and death. In fact, one drug that's a statin called Baycol was taken off the market a number of years ago because there were just a lot of people who are coming down with this rhabdomyolysis. We also know that, that mitochondrial production of oxygen goes down, so we can't produce as much uh, ATP, which is the energy currency of the cell. It's like gasoline is to a car, ATP is to a cell. We have to have it. So people often will have shortness of breath, uh, they may have problems with congestive heart failure, and just with generalized weakness. Other things that you can see with it are peripheral neuropathies, and now we're finding the FDA has issued some new warnings. Warnings that tell us that we can have problems with memory loss and with confusion. Uh, we knew that there was a problem associated with that, but a study has not been really done that showed that that was likely to be the case, and now we have that data. In addition, the FDA says that it raises blood sugar levels in 25 to 50 percent of people uh, who are taking these statin drugs. And it's a very worrisome thing, even though it's just an association, meaning that what we find is if people are on statin drugs, that 25 to 50 percent of them have levels of blood sugar that's higher than it should be. That's an association and not necessarily a cause, but a very worrisome one because a lot of people uh, who have problems with uh, heart attacks and strokes uh, have diabetes, but they don't need to have more people having diabetes or making it worse. So what we have here is a, is a situation where we should be taking responsibility ourselves. We should be living that healthy lifestyle that prevents inflammation, that prevents the heart attacks and strokes that we tend to resort to statin drugs for. So we have to find a way to incorporate that into our lifestyle if we do we won't be at risk for developing the side effects of statin drugs.